Hello and welcome to Neil's Bird Wrap, where I talk about some of the things that have excited me in the bird world in this last week, from international stories, national stories, and to some of the things I've been doing. One of the things I'd like to share with you today is what's happening right now in the Mediterranean. Here we are all locked down all around the world and we're not getting to travel much, but I know from reports I'm getting that as we speak, the Eleanor's falcon is feeding its young on the cliff tops in places like Crete and the Canary Islands and all through the Mediterranean as they prepare their young for the big migration they do each year. The Eleanor's falcon is a spectacular small falcon. It comes in two forms. There's a almost black one and a brown one. So this happens in wildlife sometimes where a species will have two different color forms. So the two different color forms or morphs of the Eleanor's falcon are nesting as we speak in September on these rocky islets in the Mediterranean. And why they nest this late in Europe is because right now the migratory birds are coming down from Northern Europe, migrating through Europe, across the Mediterranean and going to their summer haunts in Southern Africa. And the Eleanor's falcon, which feeds on small birds, is a specialist in catching birds as they're flying across the Mediterranean and feeding their young uh, with the migrating birds. So they have to nest much later than other species of hawks. But they've got to be very quick because what happens is by October there is no food coming through this great food supply and their chicks have got to be ready to then fly on with their parents to Madagascar which is where the Eleanor's falcon uh, spends its, its summer months. So they'll all be in Madagascar by the end of next month but right now is the peak of the breeding season for the Eleanor's falcon a beautiful small falcon that nests in the Mediterranean. So um, that's, a, that's a, 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 an exciting thing that's happening in the, in the bird world this week. The second story I'd like to share with you this week is um, I was uh, doing my COVID walk uh, in Canberra. We're allowed to have an hour or so of walking exercise each day. And I, took, I saw this amazing scene of two white cockatoos going into a hollow in a tree looking at it for a nest site and I had my camera with me and I took a couple of photographs of these this pair of white cockatoos going in and out of this hollow and it's a really cute photo and I've posted it on 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 my website so have a look at it um, the white cockatoo of course is a very large cockatoo that's common all across eastern Australia it's become more common in many places in the last couple of decades including in Sydney and coastal New South Wales and here in Canberra um, and the reason is because there's just been more food. It's been a bird that's been successfully able to move into human habitats. In fact, the white cockatoo is the most commonly recorded bird in a garden in Canberra. So, you know, I've got this very large cockatoo in our, in our Canberra gardens, amazing. They, uh, they're reported to live for um, many years and in zoos they can live to about 40 to 60 years. That's the sort of reports. So uh, some people have them as, as pet birds, and, um, and there's even reports of them, but these white cockatoos being even, even older. You'll often see the name white cockatoo or sulphur-crested cockatoo. It's the same species, it's just um, different names are used for the same bird. So the white cockatoo photograph, have a look at the photograph and, uh, and see what you think of the picture I was able to get this week. My third story this week is one that's been in the news in the last month, which is about night parrots. Now night parrots are, are one of these amazing birds that for, for decades we thought they were extinct. When I was a young kid growing up in the 60s, 70s, 80s, the, the night parrot was this bird that no one would ever see because it's disappeared. And in fact there were no records between about 1912 and really until about 20, uh, 2012. So a good century we didn't know or hadn't seen any of these birds. A night parrot is a nocturnal, get this, a nocturnal ground-dwelling parrot that occurs in the inland. So the chances of seeing this bird are really remote. It's living in spinifex, in desert country, uh, and it's tiny. It's, it's, it looks a bit like a big fat budgerigar. Um, so it's a, a bird that's not easily seen and it and, and really just disappeared from our radar for a, for a century. So um, it's been amazing that we now have records of night parrots occurring again. There was a corpse found of a dead bird in 1990, so there was a clue that we might have them still. But then in 
2012, we then found some live birds in Queensland. And this week, it's been announced that rangers in the Great Sandy Desert in Western Australia have photographed night parrots in Western New South Wales, uh, sorry, not in Western Australia, in Western WA um, in the inland deserts. So that's an exciting thing for the fact that we now know we have night parrots in Queensland and we have night parrots in the desert in WA. And this bird is not extinct, it's very rare. Perhaps it's not as rare as we think, it's just hard to find. One little clue we now have is that we know what the call sounds like. And it's a thin little whistle. And um, when you hear the whistle at night in the deserts of Australia, that's when you might be able to get onto a night parrot. And that's a fabulous story of rediscovery of a bird that we thought had been gone for a long while. The last story I'd like to share with you is a rather cute story about a bird that nest was nesting this week in a garage in a suburb in Canberra. And I was able to, I was very fortunate, I was invited by the, the owners of the house to come and have a look, um, uh, Roy and Anna, and Anne, sorry, uh, to have a look at this bird nesting. And what, what this scrub wren had done was this pair of scrub wrens, or at least a pair, but possibly three, is they'd set up their nest in the pannier of a push bike in their garage. And I was able to go and have a look at it. I set up a camera and I was able to film it. You'll be able to have a look at the footage of this on the website of the scrub wren going in and out and feeding their young, nesting in the pannier of a push bike. Now scrub wrens are a pretty common bird. Um, they, they occur in gardens and in shrub, shrub areas all up the east coast. And they, they occur in many, most of the uh, capital cities in Australia. Um, they don't occur in Tasmania, but they're a common bird and they've worked out ways of living close to human habitation to the extent that they'll nest in pot plants and fern gardens and things in and around our houses. So this is a really cute photograph. Roy rang me um, the day after I took the footage and said the birds had left the nest. So I was very lucky to get the footage on the day I did uh, to be able to share it with you um, because the next day the birds fledged and the youngsters were all bobbing around his garden um, working out how to get uh, uh, worms and things for themselves. So that's my last story for the day. If you've liked this story, please uh, check in again next week to my Neil's Weekly Bird Wrap. And please do check out other stories on my YouTube channel and on this website. Thank you.